In the last election, third-party cannabis candidates were as popular as ever, but some of those candidates were less grassroots and more like AstroTurf. And tonight, one of those candidates is telling his story of how he was tricked into running by a Republican strategist. Here's Tom Lydon of the Fox 9 Investigators. Interesting. Navigating life's obstacles is nothing new for Kevin Nase Shores, but it's never stopped him from pursuing his political ambitions. A perennial candidate, he's run for mayor of Moorhead three times. He hasn't won. My campaign slogan would be the blind leading the blind campaign. But he hasn't lost his sense of humor either. 20 years ago, Kevin Nase Shores began. You may also recognize him for riding 270 miles from Moorhead to the capital in St. Paul to raise awareness for Gulf War illness, which he says left him blind and in a wheelchair. He knew I was a very hardcore cannabis activist. Then last June, he got a call suggesting he run for Congress from a guy named Kip. Kip called me back, and he was the individual that said, hey, you know, you're politically active. What are your thoughts about, you know, rolling for U.S. representative of the 7th District? It meant running against Democratic incumbent Colin Peterson in one of the most hotly contested races in the country. And Kip suggested Shores run on the grassroots legalized cannabis party, which already had major party status, so he wouldn't need to collect signatures to get on the ballot. I was under the impression that he was part of that political party. Kip is Kip Christensen, a Republican strategist. According to federal election records, at the time he was pressuring Kevin Shores to run, he was on the payroll for the Republican National Committee. He said, well, the deadline is in uh, two days. I said, there's no way that I could do that, not with this short of a notice. And then he said, well, I'll drive up there. He says Kip Christensen drove to Moorhead to pick up his notarized affidavit of candidacy, then drove back three and a half hours to St. Paul to the Secretary of State's office where he filed Shore's papers just 45 minutes under the deadline. Shore said Christensen also paid the $300 filing fee with a money order. I asked how much is the um, filing fee and he said, don't worry, I'll cover it. And I said, really? And, and again, I'm thinking this is the grassroots party, you know, the legalized cannabis. Did Kip Christensen ever tell you at any point that he worked for the Republican Party? Not at all. Never said that? No. And you thought he was a member of the cannabis party? Yes, sir. When did you learn that Kip Christensen actually was working for the Republican Party? It was after the election. I like thinking about politics and military terminology sometimes. Business. On YouTube, you can find Kip Christensen sharing his political strategies. The Harvard grad was a Trump delegate and also ran for state party co-chair. You need to be reaching out to people outside of your organization. We wanted to know why he was so eager to support a candidate with no chance of winning. He declined an interview, but reached by phone said any allegation he misrepresented himself is not accurate. But when asked if he ever told Shores he was a Republican operative, he said, no comment. A spokesperson for the Republican National Committee told the Fox 9 investigators, the RNC has no knowledge of this, nor would we have authorized anything like what is being alleged. Deception. The man is a disabled veteran. He's blind. Uh, Oliver Steinberg was the grassroots candidate for U.S. Senate. They accidentally recruited somebody who actually believed in the cause that uh, the party stands for. He said the Republican strategy in 2020 was clear. Recruit candidates in swing districts to run under Minnesota's two major cannabis parties to siphon votes away from Democrats. As reported in the Minnesota Reformer, many were diehard Trump supporters who didn't seem interested in legalizing cannabis at all. In some cases, they may have swung the election. In Austin's state Senate race, cannabis candidate and Trump supporter Tyler Beckfar got 2,700 votes. The incumbent DFL candidate lost by 1,800 votes. And much to his surprise, Kevin Shores was defeated in the grassroots primary by Ray Hart Anderson, who's run for office twice before as a Republican. And in the second congressional district, Adam Weeks, an organic farmer and Trump supporter, ran as a candidate for legal marijuana now. 
In a voicemail he left for a friend, he said the local Republican Party recruited him and offered him 15000 for his campaign. I swear to God, dude, I'm not kidding. This is no joke. They want me to run <laughs> as a third-party liberal candidate, which I'm buying. I, I can play the liberal. You know that. Against Craig and what's his face? Weeks died from a fatal fentanyl overdose 42 days before the general election. Incumbent Democrat Angie Craig held on, but even in death, Weeks still pulled in 6% of the vote. So I go to the guy, I go, well, what if we actually win? He's like, well, we'll deal with that later. So the strategy seems to be working. I expect it'll be quadrupled in 2022. And while candidates must affirm on their affidavit for candidacy that they either participated in the party's most recent precinct caucuses or intend to vote for a majority of that party's candidates, no one ever enforces that. These uh, people filing did not even know the name of their own of the party they were filing in. Nothing at all about wrong at all about encouraging people to run for office. In fact, that's what? That's a protected right under the First Amendment. But David Schultz, an election law expert at Hamlin University, says the recruitment of Kevin Shores may have crossed a line. The deception um, really changes or, or reframes the story to make it look like what? Somebody is being tricked and somebody is being offered something of value as part of that trick. State law says a person may not reward or promise to reward another in any manner to induce the person or refrain them from being a candidate. Schultz says while there's nothing illegal about paying someone's $300 filing fee, it needs to be recorded as an in-kind campaign contribution. And it apparently wasn't. And we have a law on the books that says if I go beyond mere advocacy, if I give something of value to somebody in order to encourage them to run or not to run, that violates state law. Where is the watchdog on something like this? There are no watchdogs anymore. Schultz says while Minnesota may do great with voter turnout, the state has become notoriously weak at regulating campaigns and fair practices. It's not just about winning races anymore, he says. It's about undermining the process. What's happening here is that the very rules of the game are being challenged and undermined. Undermined, And a case like this, a situation like this, really is pointing to the changing nature of American politics and how uh, the parties are not willing to play fair anymore. Sounds like the very reason Kevin Shores wanted to run for Congress in the first place. He just didn't know who was signing him up or the real end game. I call them now the powers that should not be. For the Fox 9 investigators, I'm Tom Lydon.